Hey guys, Andrew Doby here and welcome to this episode of Just a Chat With. In our previous episode, we met Aika Headlam, who is the creative and founder of We Are Here Scotland, which is a platform that aims to amplify the voices of black and people of colour artists and creatives across Scotland's creative industries. By the time you hear this, Aika will have recently completed his campaign for the Creators Fund, which as, as of today has raised over £7,505 of their £6,000 goal. So nice one, well done Aika. Uh, I had an amazing time with Aika, uh, who has some interesting perspective on creative we also had some open and honest conversation about the challenges people of colour are facing within the creative industries and what we as people, uh, the industry, can do to overcome or help overcome those challenges. Uh, it was awesome, so if you haven't checked that out, go check that out um, already. Um, now, before then, we've had people on the podcast as Design Matters podcast host, Debbie Millman, Fantasy Interactive founder, David Martin, Creative Director at Sachi & Sachi, Frankie Goodwin, Noah Klokek from Pixar, and loads more, and we have loads more on the way. In this episode today, though, I sat down with Claude Silver, who is the Chief Heart Officer at VaynerMedia. She joined us from her home in New York. Um, we actually recorded this episode back in spring to give you a little bit of context. Um, so Claude talks about her role as Chief Heart Officer and what that entails. She tells us what it's like working with Gary Vaynerchuk and how together they define, nurture and scale a really people-focused culture at VaynerMedia. As someone who is really interested and passionate about company and brand culture, I got loads out of this episode, so I hope you do too, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Speak soon. So hey everyone and welcome to episode 27 of Just a Chat With. I'm your host Andrew Dobby. Today I am very, very excited as we're here with none other than Claude Silver, the Chief Heart Officer at VaynerMedia. VaynerMedia was founded by Gary V or Gary Vaynerchuk as you may know him and has offices in New York, LA, London and Singapore. With over 20 years of experience in positive psychology and leadership positions in brand strategy, Claude um, is nearly seven years now into her role at VaynerMedia, where she oversees talent management, retention, L&D, coaching, people operations, recruitment, and especially culture for over a thousand people. I don't know how you do it. Claude has a passion for creating spaces where people can thrive and says her life purpose is to be a joyful service and unlock, unlock sorry, emotional optimism in us all. Claude is also the host of uh, Emotional Optimism, Living in the Silver Lining podcast, so check that out if you haven't already, um, where she talks to guests about tapping into emotional optimism and heart leadership. Claude, thank you so much for being here. How are you? Oh my God, that was an incredibly long intro. Thank you. My God. Oh. Oh, you're telling me. It's, it's, it's the hardest. It's the hardest thing, isn't it, to try and say these intros? But I think it's sometimes it's sometimes nice, isn't it, to 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 stop in life and and hear what you've been up to. And you must be incredibly proud. Thank you so much. Well, it's first and foremost, it's great to be here. I'm so excited. I wish I could be there in person. Uh, well, next, well, next I'm, I'm excited and you know you, you've already met my head of people Hannah Davidson and she is the yeah. most excited for this episode um so she she's she, you she's completely you're her hero you're also one of my heroes as well Thank so we're, we're absolutely delighted um that you're here with us on the show How, how's how's 2021 been treating you so far you know so far so good I mean I think so many of us left 2020 thinking that 2021 would just be like, oh my God, it's springtime and things are so different and I can go hang out with my friends. And, you know, I think a lot of us, especially, you know, the people I work with really felt like it just became this monotonous line that just continued going on a straight line. So I, I have to say, I'm very excited that spring is here. And, yes. Uh, the snow has melted. I, that absolutely helps. But 2021 has been, you know, full of um, incredible challenges. And I like mm -hmm. challenges quite a bit. Otherwise, we would be asleep all day. Yeah. And a lot of just very healthy, constructive teamwork. And yeah. team for me, the team is everything. I love yeah. working in teams as as much as I do a lot of solo individual work. Yeah. I couldn't do any of that without a team. 
Yeah, and and you know when when you talk about a team, it's not it's not a small team. It's a pretty sizable team that you you, you have a position to lead within, isn't it? So you, you're is it four locations for VaynerMedia now? Yeah, it's four locations, the ones you listed off, and yeah. uh, we also have a Chattanooga, Tennessee location, mm-hmm. uh, smaller office there. So we're in so many different you know arenas i mean i think we'll for sure be in latin america at some point we've got people uh in, in, from our singapore office we've got people in southeast asia and australia and thailand so we are everywhere and it's so you know it's amazing because we're all on screen right now so there is so much we can get done because yeah. it's easier to access someone it's easier to set up a meeting and really yeah. like see you even if it's dinner time you know or breakfast time um and we all still are so hungry for the oxytocin for the feeling that we get when we can just you know see our buddy in the hallway and high five them and you know chat in the bathroom about what you're doing coming up and on the weekend so it's just a funny little time and and um we're getting through it and uh, I just hope that everyone has been healthy and keeping well. Yeah. Well, well, you, you know, you, you talked, you talked about these kind of four locations and there's now a thousand people and, you know, you've been at VaynerMedia now for seven years and, you know, I've watched from the sidelines as I'm sure many other people have, um, you know, Gary's journey, your own journey and the, and the, the agency's journey. And it's, you know, I, I suppose, can you talk us through what that growth has been like, you know, when, when you came in, how many people were there and kind of, you know, yeah. I, I suppose also if you tag on kind of where where does the title chief heart officer? I know very much, but I'm sure, sure some people listening again are, are a bit like, well, what's, what's that? <laughs> what is it? Right, right. So I started at VaynerMedia in May of 2014. So I am mm-hmm. coming right up on seven years. I was Gary's first senior hire. Mm-hmm. Um, I was without a doubt one of the five most, you know, the five eldest people. Uh, we, I was employee 389, mm-hmm. and the average age was about 23 years old. So wow. I was not 23 years old. I was almost double that. <laughs> and I remember my first day. It was so fantastic. We were all sitting on top of each other. It was very much still startup-y. Mm-hmm. And we had, I think VaynerMedia had been there for five, you know, been alive for five years or so. And I sat down on this table and there were two, you know, really really young, excited guys. And they both said to me, hi, I'm so-and-so. Hi, I'm so-and-so. What's your favorite app? And I thought, oh yeah, I'm not in Kansas anymore. Like we're really, and so I'm sure I said something like Spotify, right? Favorite app. And I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah, right, right. MySpace. (laughs) And um, yeah, I'm sure they said something very uh, innovative. So the journey has been incredible because mm. now we're at a thousand people, right around a thousand people. We're global. We're in different time zones. Mm-hmm. We've evolved as human beings. We've aged up. You know, we're all in very different life stages. There are the average age now is 31, 32. Yeah, so it's yeah. quite a bit, quite a bit older. We've got a lot of people that are, you know, getting married, having kids. Now that people are no longer in the office, you know, moving out of New York, buying homes in other places, mm-hmm. moving out of Los Angeles, um, and so you know, in terms of the holistic human, I've seen so much evolution. Yeah. In these seven years, and there's people that have, you know, been with me the entire, you know, the entire journey, which has been phenomenal. When I came in, we were still small enough that, you know, we called we called ourselves a family. Yeah. And as I came and started to evolve myself into the role of chief heart officer, which I'll get into in a second, sure. it became very apparent to me as we grew in size that people really didn't want to be called family anymore because as we aged up, people had their own families and mm-hmm. they really wanted that separation. Sure which I appreciate uh, having a family as well. So I really call us like this wonderful melting pot of of collaboration, of friendship. We're very, we're kind to one another. And I think through that kindness, because that's such a part of our ethos, you get to great ideas together. Now it's not always utopia. It doesn't always happen like that. But so the role of chief heart officer was created to scale Gary. Yeah. And in fact, when when he announced the role to the organization, I had already been in the organization for 
for 16 months. So I had amassed a lot of equity. I knew what was going on. I knew the skeletons. I, I knew the ins and outs. Sure. And what he said internally was, Claude will do with you what I do with you in those rooms, which means in his five minute meetings, really unlocking someone, really finding out what really makes that person tick. How can we absolutely hold this person, get them into what our DNA is, our religion, our beliefs, so that they can be their greatest self with us. They can go on the journey with us. And when I took the role, I asked him two things. One, what are we doing? What are we doing here? And he said, we're building the greatest human organization of all time. Mm -hmm. Okay, sign me up. That is a job I want to be part of. I want to be part of that human organization. Yeah. And then I said, how do we know if I'm successful? And he said, you will touch every single individual and infuse the agency with empathy. Yeah. And to this day, that is the only job description I have. And so it's mine to figure out every single day how I'm going to do that. Yeah. How am I, what tools am I going to use? What am I doing with this guy that gets on camera and really isn't much of a talker? How am I going to bring things out of that person? How am I going to um, um, get people into the vibe that the culture is their responsibility to? Hmm. You know, how are we going to bring people along this journey that we are creating an absolutely different way of advertising because we put the consumer first because we care about each other, you know? Um, so every single day I have to figure out how am I going to scale myself too? Because I, yeah. I can only touch probably about, you know, let's be honest, you know, 20 to 25 people a day if I'm, if I'm efficient. So, yeah. So the role of the chief heart officer is really that, that to, to hold the culture, to help co-cultivate co the culture. To you're like the, the, you're kind of like the visionary for the kind of culture and the, the ultimate ambassador of what, yeah. what you want it to be. Is that is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cer certainly the culture is dictated and set by Gary at the top. Mm -hmm. That's always how I think it has to be to sustain. But I'm that person. You know, the ball mm -hmm. came here. And so what am I doing with the ball? And making sure I'm passing the ball and and you know, and sewing things together. You know, I often talk about our culture as being this wonderful, you know, like grandmother's quilt. Every mm -hmm. single person has a different patch. Yeah. And your patch might be pink and my patch might be denim and his patch might be corduroy and his patch might be a rugby shirt. And, but all of that uniqueness, mm. when you sew it together, is what makes this culture alive and yeah. thrive. So that's a long way of saying, yeah. yes, I am building no, a, the culture. I, I, I like, I like your analogy on the patchwork. I think it's, <laughs> it's something I was talking to someone in my team the other day, and they they, they kind of they, they almost came to the realization and proactively came to me and said, I've realized something recently that it's not just you that makes this culture great. It's each of us have our own part to play in, in making it. And and it was, it was lovely to hear someone coming to me and saying that and having the realization. And I've seen them actually trying to put into the culture as much as they can now because they've realized wait a minute it's not it's not someone it's not someone that does it it's not gary it's not andrew it's not claude it's all of us right isn't it yeah i mean it's so i love that you said that there's no wizard of oz here yeah there's no you know behind the curtain here's the you know the puppeteer uh you know the puppet master i should say <laughs> yeah. it's all of us yeah and that i think because it's all of us and because when you impart that to another person and empower them Mm. then they can put their thumbprint in the culture and she mm. could put her heart print in the culture and he could put his thumbprint in the culture. And mm. then it is a culture of the masses of the many. It is not just Claude's way or the highway. In fact, it's not at all. It's everyone's way. Yeah. And we bring that together to create Vayner media, the greatest human organization in the world. And that is aspirational and and every day we try to get that much closer to it so so i, I love that piece with your your vision right that, and i think gary is good at it as a as a ceo he's kind of got his vision of buying the jets right which i think yeah. is clever because then you're watching and everyone's waiting for that moment right that's right <laughs> and and i think what's really clever what you've done here is like that you're creating we're creating the best human organization right and we we, we kind of in, in our business we recently went through a process, you know, during COVID, the world turns up, takes upside down. 
I believe it's quite good to reset a vision of where we're going, what we're doing. And and we set kind of three goals, three main goals as a business. And one of them was to be the best place in the world to work for. Mm -hmm. And I've been amazed at having that as one of your key drivers, what it does, because suddenly everyone understands, well, we're going to be that. Yeah. I'm going to give my idea on how that, that comes alive. Whereas if it's not there, no one talks about it. It's not a conversation piece. And yes. so... I, am I getting from you that that's why that's such an important piece that that you stand with that flag and say this is going to be the best organization because by doing that that helps empower everyone to go create it that's exactly right because energy is everything mm. but you have to give people the spark yes you know you have to give them mm. boom you have to light it up for them sometimes otherwise you know what this is just another job, just another paycheck, just another place I go and I give my eight, nine hours a day. That is not sufficient enough. Mm -hmm. That's not sufficient. I, I want people to look back on this time and say, mm -hmm. Vader Media was the best career choice I ever made. Wow, those seven years I spent at Vayner were the best I ever spent. I mm -hmm. love that. Wow, what a great stepping stone. I, I read some. I said read something recently that's like that. That that is, I can't remember where I read it. It's probably it's probably going to be you or Gary. To be honest, I'm probably <laughs> going to quote you without realizing it. Um, I, I read someone said that when someone joins your your company, you sh you sh your job as a leader in the business is to leave them in a better place when they finally leave your business than when they came in. And I think that for me was like, ah, I get it. That's that's good yeah. because that then you know it focuses all of my energy all of my leadership team's energy into that's what we're here to do yeah and, and you know and ultimately people leave right they've got lives they have families the things change there's so many variables in life and yeah I, I think it's a nice goal to have isn't it to leave someone in a better shape than you found them that is the only thing that matters to mm. me which is you know you go back to the Maya Angelou quote which I hold very near and dear to me which is people will forget what you said People will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Yeah. Love it. How you make someone feel is the only thing that matters to me. Mm. And so. I I'm devoted, de de literally devoted to making people feel that they belong at VaynerMedia, that they are safe and that they can bring it. They can literally bring their authentic self mm -hmm. And let's go. Let's try it out. What you got? Let's play. Yeah. Let's let's, you know, life is way too short as I now am in my, you know, my early 50s. Like life goes by in a blink of time. When you're 30, you don't think that. Even when you're 37, you don't think that. But when you cross over, all of a sudden you're you say to yourself, Oh wow, yeah, I only have this much time. What am I gonna do with this? What am I, I gonna do? How am I gonna show up every day? Yeah, and sorry to cut you off, but no, like, sorry, sorry. I want people to show up feeling like they can bring their authentic, their consistent self every single day. And I want mm -hmm. Vayner Media to show up in that same exact way with them because we made a handshake. We, we mm -hmm. shook hands. I'm going to give you this as a culture, as a company. I'm going to give you this. And as a human being, mm -hmm. you're going to give me this. And together, we're going to make magic happen. Yeah, there's there's something, you, you you know, when you talked about kind of how much time we've got, there's a really nice thing I came across a few years ago. It's, it's a website called Wait But Why, right? Waitbutwhy.com. Okay. Okay. And um, on this website, you can print off uh, a sheet of paper and it's got 52 little blank boxes across the way, right? And that's those that's that's a year in weeks. Yes. And then it's got ninety of those lines right the way down the page. Okay. So there's just it's a it's a page full of boxes, and you can take this um you can take this page and you can fill it out however you like. So some I did it as an exercise with people, and some people crossed off sections, some people scored them out, some people you know put in this is when I went to school, this is when I studied, this was my first job, and what it does though you can also go into the future and go. Oh, this is when I will be 50, 60, 70. This is when my children will be this. And you can start to go, wait a wow. minute. I've only wow. got 
20 boxes left or yeah. 10 boxes and yeah I, I just thought you would enjoy that um, um yeah i'm gonna check <laughs> it out well we have another uh, another baby being born and uh my partner and i in seven weeks so holy wait but why wow i mean I wow can't congratulations believe, thank you a whole nother a whole nother being is going to be uh coming into this world so and, and it's just it's an exciting time because i i think I'm an optimist and I, and I do feel as though we are on the precipice of some phenomenal change. Conversations have moved into the realm of talking about the whole person, talking about emotional and mental health. Yeah. These are things that we've, we've kept to the back for so long. You know, don't talk about it, but in not talking about it, we only bring that half of us to, to work. I'm so glad you said this. This is where I was going next because I, I know that you're you're passionate about this, and I'm really passionate about this as well. Is what? Why do we have that where we where where we're meant to leave half of our human brain at home and not bring it? I don't get it. Tell me, give me your give me yeah, your yeah, thoughts yeah. on this. I don't get it either. Other than work was a means to an end. Mm. You know, work work was. I mean, even the job, the, even the 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 word work implies something hefty, something laborious, something, you know, you don't want to do maybe, but it was, it was a place to go. You punched in, you punched out and, yeah. you know, you, you, you sweated, maybe you gave a little sweat that day, but by no means was it, it didn't just, was it like your happy place, mm. you know, and there was a real separation. No one wanted to know how someone felt god forbid you talk about your feelings you know so we i i believe that we you know at some point just started to you know put the armor up mm -hmm. you can't get in you're not going to get in yeah and it's interesting because when you when you don't let someone in i'm not i'm not sure how much of you you let out then yeah you know what i mean it's yeah, it's yeah. a it's really not a win-win it's, no. you know, you're do you're, you're, you draw, you know, it's like no one wins quite frankly. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm yes. absolutely into people feeling like they can bring their authentic self to work. You know, I used to say their whole self, you know, that's up to them. I just want them to bring themselves that's a good point, isn't sure. it? That you don't you don't have to bring every piece. We're not asking for every bit, but just no. feel that you can bring what you want to bring in, isn't it? Yeah, okay. feel yes, and and that the part that you're bringing in is going to be the part that can collaborate mm. with others, and and so that requires you to bring in that part that might be a little malleable, that might be interested in sharing, that might be interested in taking risks, whatever part that is. If that's your whole self, that's amazing. That's at that, uh, three quarters of yourself. That's amazing. But we want to see that consistently, 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 you know, and yeah. we, as the organization, as I said already, will show up consistently mm -hmm. with a vision, with the tools, with the resources, with the opportunities, with the education. Yeah. And I think that, I think that's it, isn't it? You, you know, we, we've been doing a lot of the work on that and Hannah has been doing a lot of work in our yeah. team of kind of, you almost need the kind of education to let people know it's okay. You need people to show, you need leaders to show vulnerability, don't you? To to let people know it's okay. I think people often feel like as a leader, you, you need to be bulletproof as if you're not, you know. So I, I try and make as much of an effort as possible with my team to show, I don't know what I'm doing just now. That's I right. need you guys to help me. <laughs> uh, I don't know this bit. I've never been through a pandemic. This is my first one. Exactly. You know, and <laughs> I think... Mine, <laughs> mine too. I think I think sometimes we're, there's, there's this kind of almost pressure to feel like you have to pretend that you know always what you're doing and none of us do. <laughs> yeah, none of us do. And I think when you can remind yourself that you don't need to have all of the answers, mm -hmm. our job as leaders is to really, I think, hold that space that it's okay to give it a shot. It's okay to fa fail. It's okay to feel. Yeah. You know, and we showcase that in our own being. Mm. You know, we also have to be walking the walk here. Yeah. You know, because if it's just, if we're just, if we're just, you know, if we're full of BS, then everyone's going to know that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And if, if the pandemic didn't bring this out of us, I don't know what did. Like we all leaders, I believe, and all great leaders have shown up 
with more vulnerability, more authenticity, you know, maybe even over communicating what they used to and bringing themselves to work because this has not been easy. Like we were all in triage, man. We were all putting out the bleed every, every which way we could. Right. It was like madness. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, together we rise and, and most companies through leadership, I think have been able to emerge a lot stronger. Yeah. I, I'm interested, Claude, you know, you, you know, you, you, it's funny because when you talk about when you went into VaynerMedia, it was 389, you know, as if that's a small number, right? That's That for me is still a huge number, right? So our, our business is 50, just under 50. Yeah, and there'll, yeah. be, there'll be people listening just now that have a culture with three or four people and mm-hmm. there'll be, you know, and there'll be every every number in between. And I'm, I'm always quite interested you know, because essentially it's a tribe of people, right? You're built, you know, Gary's building a tribe, you're building a tribe and managing and leading a tribe. I'm building and leading a tribe and and we all are at different scales. And, you know, I I don't know if you've read the book Sapiens. Um, It's a brief history of mankind. There's another one I'm going to say. I'm going to ping you a link because you'll love it. But but it talks about kind of, there's there's a lot of talk about and it often talks about when kind of tribes get bigger and, you know, um, how, I suppose, how, how messages are passed amongst tribes, how, how we inspire and lead. And they often correlate it to army, you know, and, yeah. and in the past of mankind, how that's happened. And I suppose I'm interested that a, a thousand people, because I've never been there, how, how, do, how do we keep a consistent culture message? How does that practically, right? Because, you know, I, at the moment, during the pandemic, we were doing five all hands, you know, mm-hmm. one a week, one a day, right? right and yeah. we've gone down to three, one Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I've spoken to a company recently with 500 people. They they can't get everyone on one Zoom call because they're just, they don't have the license or something. <laughs> how, how do you do it with a thousand? And how do you keep Vayner Media consistent across all four, right? Yeah. All four areas and time zones and everything in between. Right. Well, that's the scaling. That's mm-hmm. the scaling of culture is the question. And so when we have... A That's a much easier ago, way to say it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've hired phenomenal leaders that mm-hmm. have the same kind of DNA in their veins. Mm-hmm. What, is that, what is that DNA? The DNA is being the bigger person in every situation. Mm-hmm. It's leading with kindness. It's leading with empathy. Mm-hmm. It's trusting first. Mm-hmm. You know, it is coming from a place of yes and, so possibility, rather than no. Yeah. Um, And it's the um, commitment to finding whatever right is together. So it's not leadership from on high. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. We have no, the ivory tower leadership is gone. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I admire so much about Gary, who's, you know, such an incredible leader, such an incredible mentor to many is he he is not there at all you just feed him the information thank you very much move on and the other thing about gary that i've learned so much about and this is all about this is getting to your question of scaling because yeah, we yeah. all you know we all want to um uh take the bits of him that we can and impart that into our own leadership style mm. But, you know, the other thing with Gary is once something is done, it's gone. He doesn't bring up ancient history. That happened yesterday. That's gone. He lets it go immediately. And that's something that is so hard to do. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to do because we've got hangups, disappointments, unconscious bias, all of this stuff. And he shows us that here's a guy that's running a massive company, many companies really, yeah. And he's, a, you know, so he's able to do all of these things. Well, we can at least give it our, our, our try to do yeah. that. So we lead with heart. Yeah. We believe in putting people first. We believe in, you know, um, making sure that people understand what their, uh, their responsibility is, what the expectations are, are on them. And in every different office where we have these managing directors, yes, of course, do they do their own thing? Of course, yeah. they're human beings. Remember, they're, they're culture champions too. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we all work for one logo. Yeah. One logo. And that is extremely important. Hmm. That I work at VaynerMedia. Mm-hmm. I oversee the people and experience team. Yeah. 
I do this, 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 but I work at VaynerMedia. Mm -hmm. I work for, and I work with a thousand people at VaynerMedia. Mm -hmm. Not once did you hear me say my title. Mm. Doesn't yeah. matter. It's a great yeah. title. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the reason I say it doesn't matter is because you take your ego out of it. I am not here to get, you know, I don't need a point on the board. I already have the points on the board. And what we're trying to say to these other leaders is like, hey, understand who we are. Understand the religion of VaynerMedia, if you will. Mm -hmm. And when you get that, all you want to do is provide to other people. All you want to do is make sure that their ideas are getting air and oxygen so that maybe they can get a win on the board. Yeah. So that's the, that's the biggest way of scaling. And then I, you know, I've, I've, I have these, what I call culture champions in all of the other offices and these culture champions are people that I could call right this minute and say, Hey, five of you, I need you to lean in on Bobby. Bobby's mm -hmm. having a hard day. Someone in his family passed away. He yeah. didn't get a great, he didn't get a, a pay rise that he wanted. He's very frustrated. I need you to lean in on Kathy. And I can literally write them or someone new comes, you know, yeah. Andrew's new. He's been here three months. We chat. Hey, Andrew, do you know anyone else uh, at Vayner at, outside of your team? No, I don't. Great. I can't wait to introduce you to these 10 people all over the world yeah. and you'll have 15 minute coffee. So that's how you do it. But you need someone with this kind of energy. Yeah. Yeah. So you've, the, is, you've kind of got those practical people in a people team underneath you that help with the yeah. the onboarding, with the issues that arise, mm. with the challenges, with the day to day. That's 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 there. But you're yeah. again, you're kind of not directing. That's kind of maybe the wrong word. Yeah. Um, you're inspiring them, aren't you? And kind of trying yeah. to yeah. I'm try I'm I'm uh, facilitating. Mm -hmm. You know, by just opening up the path. Mm. And 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 how how important. Uh, Claude, you you know you obviously spend time coming doing podcasts, right? You're 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 busy, uh, you're busy lady, yeah. and you've you've got. I'm sure your diary. I can imagine your diary and what your email inbox and your Slack will look like. Um, you know how how important do you think it is for you know finding this time to do this, you know, personal brand type stuff to put the, your voice out there? I mean, I think. I think it has a huge ripple in terms of the inspiration. It, you know, it brings it's rippled right the way across to Scotland, right? Isn't right. you know, isn't that amazing? And it's it's bled into my culture, right? You know, you. because Hannah's quoting you, I'll quote you, I'll quote Gary, I'll you know. Yeah. I suppose you know how how much of your time is spent on this kind of stuff, and and where do you see its importance? So I would probably say two hours a week, maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, three hours a week, um, at all different times in the day, but I. I think it's important. I think the, I think it's not that Claude's important. Mm -hmm. I think the philosophy or the, uh, uh, the, the thinking is what is important mm -hmm. to bring us into this new day. Mm. So whether or not it's Claude doing it, Peter doing it, Andrew doing it, Sarah doing it, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter. You know, these are thoughts that I've had for such a long time while I've been in the working world and while I've been a coach and while I've been a tennis coach or when I founded and, you know, ran my own surfing company. I've always been the same me. Yeah. And if I'm inspiring someone that then I'm that much, uh, you know, honored and humbled by that. Mm. And I think that the thinking, what it's like to lead with heart is incredibly important. And because that's something that is so near and dear to me, I'm going to spend time talking about it. Yeah, I think that's great. I don't, I don't know if you've ever come across Stephen Bartlett. Um, he was the founder of Social Chain. He's a really inspirational okay. guy. And it's kind of kind of what you were saying there. Is he said the other day, someone asked him a similar question of, you know, why do you put all these thoughts out? And he's like, I'm selfishly putting them out for myself. And I really related to this. And that, that it helps you actually... This this moment here, I was doing this podcast, helps us go. Actually, what 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 am I doing as my chief heart officer? Am I? Yeah. You know, it helps you almost check in on yourself, keep you developing, and keep to make sure holding yourself accountable to what you're doing because you're having to say it. That's true. That's really true, and it's that is true. It's funny for me. I don't feel it exactly the same because. 
Mm-hmm. Because this is all I would be doing. There's nothing else. Even when I worked on brands and brand strategy, mm-hmm. this is the same Claude. Mm-hmm. This is the same exact me that yeah, showed yeah, up yeah. every single day. I just mm-hmm. get to do this now 24-7. Mm. But so, do, you feel, do you feel like, you know, you're getting to really hone it and kind of because you're so focused just on this now? or Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm getting to hone it over and over and over mm. and over again because – I work with people all day and, and that there's nothing perfect about a human being and we're messy and we're beautiful and we're imperfect and we're trying to figure it out. And Mm. I'm trying to figure it out too every single day. So uh, yes, I'm honing it. I'm honing it. I'm sharpening my skills. I'm throwing that skill out, that tool out. I'm bringing this tool in. I'm rewriting this tool. So, I mean, it's a lot. Um, like I said, there's nothing else I would be doing. I'm, I'm, no, so I'm glad passionate. you're doing this. I think Thank you're in the you're you're in your your happy place. I can tell you're in your happy <laughs> place. So I, let's keep you there. Um, yeah. Now you you touched on there that you know. Um, People, people are messy, right? Culture is yeah. messy. Yeah. We're always striving. And I can see and I can really get that genuine feel that you are striving to create that, that best culture. As you know, though, it's not, it's not always we, we, we make mistakes. Leadership teams make mistakes. People within the business make mistakes. There's so many personalities. There's wants, needs, desires, hopes. Oh. Yeah. What, what, how, do you, how, do you, how do you control the messy? How do you, yeah. <laughs> how do you deal with that, I mean, that part of it? I'm messy too, you know. <laughs> um, you know, how do I control the messy? So I had a messy situation going into the weekend. Mm-hmm. On Thursday, it crept up. On Friday, it really started to roar. Mm-hmm. And um, the way I tried to tackle that is by bringing other people into the situation so it wasn't just me. Mm giving other people voice so that they felt like they had an opportunity to um, take part in the fixing of it. Yeah. Um, So much so that we banded together on Friday. Mm -hmm. We ended up taking the issue to Gary. Yeah. Which is something I do in a very rare occasion, but I do it because I want him to know what's going on. He asked a couple of questions Thank God he did. And then by yesterday morning, I took care of it. Sure. And this is all about a human being who was himself being extremely messy and disruptive to other people Yeah. at a very senior level. So, um, you know, what, what can I do other than I can't change anyone's behavior. I can just let them know what works here mm-hmm. and what doesn't work here. Yeah. And, By the way, there's all kinds of reasons someone all of a sudden becomes disruptive in the workplace or unhinged in the workplace because they've got all of this other stuff called their life (laughs) that they bring in with them. And, um, you know, it just, things spill out. So, you know, what I think I'll just say it again, there's nothing I can do to change someone's behavior. I can help someone change their environment. I can help someone try to see what their behavior is causing in others, but I'm never going to be able to go into Andrew's brain and rewire it the way Claude wants it. No way. It's not, that's just not my job and it's not my place. I can rewire this brain. Hmm. So, you know, it's, I mean, we're talking about a lot of psychology right now. Uh, is what we're talking about because when we talk about humans, that's what it's about. Like what makes us tick, what makes us, you know, um, uh, fall on ourselves all of a sudden the imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. you know, all of a sudden become, like I said, unhinged, like what's going on with that person. And, you know, uh, we all know you're never going to know what, what, what that other person is going through or that other person. Cause you're only seeing, even if they bring their authentic self to work, yeah. We're still not going to know what, what they're actually going through, especially, you know, as we talk about uh, diversity and inclusivity, mm-hmm. you know, you and I are never, ever going to know what it's like to have different color skin. Yeah. And we can be as empathetic and kind and, and sensitive as we possibly can be. And at the end of the day, you and I will never know that existence. 
Yeah. So it just kind of, kind of like it, it humbles you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that's uh, it's, it's inspiring to hear your thoughts on that. And yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's, it's it's funny, isn't it? You you, you often start out a, a business, um, you know, with a craft or a skill, you know, um, you know. Yeah, I was, right. I was a designer, right? I I, right. I was a I was a graphic designer, and suddenly I'm now leading a team of fifty people. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm very aware that I'm there now, not as a designer. I don't do any design at all. It's a distant memory now, but. Um, I'm there to look after the psychologically psychological safety and well-being and physical safety of all those people, yeah. and, and and that's making sure, as you say, with diversity inclusion, making sure that everyone has a voice at the table, that everyone feels respected, everyone has their part to play, and yeah, it's you know it's, it's certainly over the last year and just you know um, with Black Lives Matter and everything else, I've been on a huge learning journey in terms of really trying to be the best I can be and trying to build that that best culture for everyone um yeah and yeah you know what I was going to say is you started out as a graphic designer with a skill and a passion and now you're a leader which is amazing you took that journey you stepped up and did that and that's your calling right one of your callings there are many people that just want to be a graphic designer and that should be okay yeah. And if they don't want to manage people, and by the way, half the population doesn't want to manage people <laughs> or half True. the population is terrible at it, yeah. that should be okay. They should yeah. still have the progression that they want as a human being and do their craft. Not everyone has to lead. And exactly. that's something that I think we need to look at inside of our organizations now. That should not be the only way someone gets mm. a pay rise, you know. Yeah. That's a whole other conversation for another day. Yeah, no, no, it's, a, it's an interesting one. And it's one, yeah, I can I can very much relate to in terms of, yeah, you know, some people just need, are, are, are happy in that space where they're a technician, where they're a designer, where yeah. they're a crafts person, you know, and. Yeah, they just want to execute all day long and have some, you know, some blue sky thinking and thank, and thank God they do, because that's where some great ideas come from, you yeah. know. We need them. We need yeah. those people. We, we need the balance. We need that. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm interested, Claude, on your thoughts on culture. Is it engineered or is it organic? So the engineering is, uh, I do think it needs to come from the top in terms of being dictated in some way mm-hmm. by a leader. So again, when Gary like started, a spark, isn't it? Is the, yeah. When Gary started VaynerMedia, right. we are a family first company. Yeah. Okay. Cool. He dropped that into the water, mm. and then organically, people were like, "Oh, what does family first mean? What does family first feel like? What does that feel like?" Mm. So I think it is primarily organic, but it needs that spark. To your point, it needs to have someone say. We are like this. We are democratic. We are autocratic. We are a dictatorship. We are going to be an emotionally fluid culture, whatever it is. But um, someone needs to dictate it. If not, I think that there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, you need you need to give the kind of pillars, don't you? I think that's what you're saying is there's 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 things that, that stand here that hold us up and there's flex, but there's flex in between them. It's just called beliefs. That's all it is. Culture is a set of beliefs that the tribe adheres to. Mm. It's got, there's a lot of, you know, when you think about religions, I, I, yeah. I, there, there's a lot of parallels, isn't there, in terms of cultures, religions, and kind of, you know, there's kind of the values, which are the behaviors we're looking for. And, you know, and it's, it's kind of the same, isn't it? One, one, and, one and both. Well, yeah. I mean, the, you know, the word um, cultura, Culture, cultura, uh, means um, uh, Mm. something about the soul. The cultivation of the soul is where the word culture comes from. Wow, this is new. This is good. That's (laughs) deep. That is deep. (laughs) Cultura is the cultivation of the soul. That's what we're now, doing. All I now feel now I need to, to roll some sort of spliff here. We need to just start <laughs> kind of Elon Musk style start. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm ready next time when I come to Scotland. <laughs> 
Oh, wow, yeah. No, that, that was one of, one of my next questions for you is like, what is culture? Because it's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a set of, it's a patterns of, a pattern of belief, isn't yeah. it? A pattern of behavior. Is that, yeah. is that, is that, that's, it. that's yeah. it. And uh, Seth Godin says, mm -hmm. people like this do things like that. <laughs> so people like this. Yeah. These are our beliefs. We do things like that. Yes. Mm. And, and not every culture is going to be for every human. You got to find your culture, you find your tribe. And that's, I think what part of, and this is very, uh, very deep and philosophical, but I think that's part of what life is about finding your tribe. Mm. Where do I fit in? Where do I belong? Where can I be my freaky self? You know, <laughs> I like that. I like it. You know, we, one of our values at Made Brave is be your weird self. Yeah, like, be your weird self. Yeah, let's, let's do I, it. I might change it to freaky self. It sounds, yeah. it sounds cooler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm oh, conscious God. of your time. I know you're extremely busy. So I'm just going to ask um, as a last kind of question, um, because I could sit here for the rest of today um, and get your brain. Um, because I enjoy this thoroughly. Um, but we, you know, we, have, we have a lot of kind of younger people who listen to this, right? So we have uh -huh. a lot of people who... I reckon might want to be a chief heart officer, right? Ooh. After hearing this, they might go, that sounds like an awesome <laughs> job. How does someone in young get to be in your world and do what you do? Uh, okay. This is such an important question. And I think my answer, I hope my answer is really understood, which is if you have a heart to help people. Mm. If you have a heart to really go into a situation with very little judgment, mm. if you have that ability, if you really, really give a shit about people, then you're halfway there. Mm. You're legitimately halfway there because you can't make this up. Yeah. You can't make giving a shit about people. <laughs> you either do or you don't. Yeah. <laughs> and it's okay if you don't. Yeah. And it's okay if you do. See, there's yeah. no judgment there. Yeah. But whatever yeah. you're doing in your organizations, if you are like me, continue being, do this, but be you. Mm. Be ba be Janie, be Jack, be Hannah. Mm -hmm. Claude is already taken. We already got Claude. I'm I'm, you know, imperfectly perfect. You know, messy just like everyone else. But keep honing those skills. If you really like people, then show up. You know, show up, be kind, help them move their shit out of the way so that they can find their roadmap. You know, it's not, this is the biggest thing I can say. Mm -hmm. It is never about me. There is not one thing that I do all day long to take care of Claude, taking care of these other people, which then feeds me. Mm -hmm. Well, who looks after Claude, though? That's what I'm concerned for now. I want, no, no, I want to know who's looking after you. Friends, family, me, yeah. me, when I get, when I, you know, have that moment of, Claude, you need to look after you. You know, yesterday I was able to listen to two podcasts. Like, that's unheard of. <laughs> that's good for me, you know? So, uh, and like I said, you know, we started this conversation, how's 2021 been? And I said, you know, it's springtime now and it's, uh, I'm happy in spring. I'm so happy in warmer weather. I'm psyched to, you know, get out there and, and, um, you know, get my feet in the dirt. Well, great. Well, I, I think that's a, a nice moment to, um, to finish up. And I want to thank you for giving us one of your couple of hours that you, you give thank in you. the week to thank us. You. We feel um, very um, thankful for that. So thank you I, again. Yeah, I've enjoyed it hugely, Claude. And thanks for putting out your your positivity into the world. Um, it's, it's, it's great. You've not just kept it in VaynerMedia and you've given it to some of us to, <laughs> to pinch a little bit from as well. So, um, so keep doing. And uh, for those who are only listening on the podcast and um, if you were watching just now as well you'll see that Claude actually has two squash rackets I think behind her and they look like two little mini mini mouse ears yeah, uh, yeah. I, I've been watching you the whole time because you, you you hit the ones in the middle and there's just like there's two little ears here so you look like uh, that's so it. funny <laughs> they're old tennis rackets old tennis rackets yeah 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 uh, awesome. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank well, you. Thank, thank you so much. You. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.